former member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board, worked at the Heritage Foundation. And again, in 2014, he advised Herman Cain's 2012 presidential campaign. He's an advisor. He was an advisor to President Trump's presidential campaign. Please welcome back to the program, distinguished visiting fellow, Project for Economic Growth, Institute for Economic Freedom and Opportunity, <laughs> Professor Stephen Moore. Stephen, as always, thank Hi, you very Larry. much for coming on. So I appreciate good to be with you. It. You too. All right. Uh, what did the market do today, Stephen? Crap. Yeah. Are you worried? Well, you know, I, I I never was a big believer that when the market reached, you know, twenty back up to like twenty seven thousand, I, I did think that the stocks were overvalued. I, and and uh, you know, I think that people got a little ahead of themselves. This is going to be, you know, we got a great jobs number on Friday, but you know, we we created two and a half million jobs, which was fantastic. There's a problem though. Uh, uh, Larry, as you know, yeah, we created two and a half million jobs, but in the previous three months, we lost you know nearly thirty million jobs. Mm -hmm. So we we've, we've dug ourselves into a huge hole as a result of what I believe is the greatest mistake, or one of the three greatest mistakes in American history, which was the lockdown of the American economy. You never shut down the economic system of a society, or you're asking for big, big, big trouble. Stephen, we got to ask, what are the other two big mistakes? Well, I think the Civil War was one of our greatest mistakes. I mean, it is a tragedy that we lost 500,000 Americans. We should have found a way to, uh, I, any way to, avoid, you know, to end slavery without a, a, a horrible war that killed 500,000 people. But, you know, I, and, and maybe World War One. I'm not, a, I, I don't like war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I wasn't a big fan of World War One either. But, but the, you know, the idea of shutting down our economy was just, you know, awful. I mean, and by the way, the people who suffered the most, Larry, were the lowest income people, black Americans. We have the best, do you know, uh, Larry, from 2017 through 2020, what demographic group saw the fastest rise in incomes? Blacks. Black Americans. Mm -hmm. Yes, I knew you knew that. And, and my, you know, wait a minute. How could that happen? We've got a racist president. How could that have happened? We had more economic advance in three years for black Americans under Trump than we did in eight years under Obama. Stephen Moore is my guest. Uh, he was an economic advisor to President Trump. Um, President Trump, to me, I could be completely wrong. You would know more than I would about this. Instinctively, he didn't want to shut down the economy, did he? Oh, Trump did not want to shut down the economy. No way. Mm -hmm. He got terrible advice from Fauci, who's you know a disaster as the as his uh, health advisor. Uh, and I'll tell you this: you know we we can't undo what has been done. But there, Donald Trump is not going to shut down this economy again. I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. I mean, now the left is saying, "Oh, we have to shut down the economy again because we've had a few more cases of coronavirus." Uh, no, we look the vast, vast, vast majority of the of the, uh, the people who've gotten very sick and have died from coronavirus are people over the age of 65 or 70. So let's keep those people healthy. But, uh, you know, we've got to get, you can't keep an economy down. And I actually think it's because we did this, we locked down the economy for two or three months, that we have these riots in the street. You can't keep young people locked up for with nothing to do, no jobs to go to, no income mm -hmm. for two or three months. And expect, you're, you're, you're creating a tinderbox, and it was just waiting for a match. Stephen Moore is my guest, economic advisor to the president. Uh, Stephen, what about all of this spending and, and all of this debt we're accumulating? I got, I got a caller who reamed me about this. He said, you're really being inconsistent. You've talked a lot about the debt and deficit under Obama, and I did, and now you're not saying anything. Well, in my defense, Stephen, when uh, Trump was running against Hillary, neither of them talked about uh, really much lowering the debt. They were, I, I said, no matter who wins, we're going to have more spending. In the case of Trump, he wants to do some sort of uh, infrastructure spending program, which if it were a, a Democrat, I'd call it boondoggle. Uh, but he wanted to do that. Hillary was much worse. That's why, of course, I supported uh, Trump and supported him enthusiastically and, and campaigned with him. But I had no illusions about the, debt or the deficit dec declining. But, right, but I had no idea it was going to go blow up this much. Well, of course, I mean, the reason the debt has been blown up is because of the, the lockdown of the economy. Right. And so, you know, when you have when you when you shut down 40 percent of your economy, you're going to lose 40 percent of your revenues. And, and then they pass all these multi-trillion dollar spending bills uh, that uh, that, uh, you know, we didn't we needed to do this so, so that people didn't, you know, su suffer deprivation. I, look, I, the one thing I'm sure of is we don't need any more spending bills. I was just over, uh, you know, meeting with the White House folks uh, earlier this week, and I basically said, 
said, you know, stop the spending. If they were to pass, Larry, this new $3 trillion bill that Nancy Pelosi wants for all her liberal special interest projects, including bailout of the uh, Illinois uh, pension system and, you know, environmental justice grants. I still don't know what those are, environmental justice grants, things like that. How can you be against something called environmental justice? You can't be against that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, but we, we, no. we would have. Uh, I know. I want. I want environmental oppression. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, it's like you know every government program is one of these wonderful right. names. It's like violence against women. Who could buy, who could be against the violence against women? Act? Right. I mean, you, you know, I was against it, by the way. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not for violence for women. Uh, Just but against the case, act. I understand. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we will have ten ten point five trillion dollars of government spending this year at all levels. That the GDP is expected to be twenty trillion. That means for the first time in American history, government spending at all levels will be more than fifty percent of GDP, bigger, larger than our entire productive private sector and every uh, all our private sector workers. There is something seriously wrong with that. They have got to stop the spending, and they got to. We don't need another spending bill. Stephen Moore has been my guest. Stephen, we only have a minute left. I want to share a story with you, what you said about World War I being a mistake. I had the honor of, of uh, introducing uh, Henry Kissinger at a speaking event once, and I was able to speak with him for about 20 minutes by myself. And I told him that I thought World War I was a mistake. We should have let him fight. Uh, there would have been some sort of uh, – uh, somebody right. would have sued for peace. It would have been a settlement. It wouldn't have ticked off the Germans the way it did. I thought the Treaty of Versailles was really unfair to Germany, yada, blah, et cetera. And I thought he was going to push back. And Stephen, he listened, and he said, "That is great merit in that position." <laughs> <laughs> well, by, by the way, uh, the fourth biggest mistake in American history was the New Deal. Agreed. Stephen Moore, thank you very much for taking the time. We appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Larry. Have a great weekend. You too.